I don't know, Marina, so, can you hear? I'm, can you hear me? Uh, if you, uh, uh, when you're at some angles, sometimes we can, yes. Keep trying. Okay, yeah. Say it uh, again, though. I said that I used to day to day uh, because it's my husband's birthday. Can you hear me? Can anybody else hear her? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Uh, what did no, I, I didn't I, hear what you said, though. Uh, yeah. Um, so why don't you put it in the chat? If you go down, if you if you go down to people at the bottom and then click on the title under shared chats you can put yes. it in there yes i uh, oh but now we can hear you really well I whatever you're doing I, yeah. so go ahead say it again okay maybe. so um okay yeah talking on day to day because i have the day can you hear me you had a birthday No, we can't hear. It's not working, right? Marina? Should, um, what should we do? No. No. Okay. no. okay. So, well, you're, you're going to have to try to put it in the chat. Jimmy, why don't you check in? One thing you did that makes you feel good about yourself? So, there is two things. One was a surprise. One thing that made me feel good about today was that I woke up really early because I have two jobs, three, if you want to consider tutoring. I don't really consider tutoring as job job but i woke up this morning went to my first job went to tutoring i went to tutor a kid that i have been tutoring for the last two years wow. and then i went to my other job and while i was on my lunch break when i came back home to eat what my mom made i had got my i ordered a new monitor so that was i didn't i didn't know it was, it was supposed to come tomorrow but it came today so that was a nice surprise do you have it up yet i have it set up i haven't connected it connected it yet i'm probably gonna do it later so what do you tutor math or uh i tutor strictly math but i i'm really uh, i really like chemistry so this okay. the student that i'm tutoring right now he's gonna he begins he starts chemistry next, next uh, in the fall so i'm basically showing him chemistry now so that we're the beginning of introduction to chemistry so that it's a smooth transition when he starts so is he a high school student or college student? He is a high school student. He's he's going into his 10th grade, his, his sophomore year. Cool. Where does he go to school? He goes to school in Pelham, Pelham High School. Very cool. So tutoring somebody for two years, you get to really know somebody, right? No, definitely, 100%. Yeah. I've, um, I, What's really interesting about it is that when I first started tutoring him, like I could pick up that he was, there was definitely, he definitely had something going on that hinders his ability. And I didn't know what until I started taking these education courses. And last semester I took, um, I took the, the class with like um, learning about disabilities and stuff. Mm -hmm. So learning about that, it helped me understand more. And then I, I figured out and I learned because his parents didn't tell me, but he, he does have an IEP and things of that nature. So after learning already what that is and asking him- a did, he, bit, did he know he had one? How did you find out? I asked him, so in order to get extra time or extended time on tests or things of that nature, yeah, yeah. You, you need an IEP for that. So I didn't ask him straight away, do you have an IEP? Because um, I didn't want to feel like I was intruding or anything like that. So I did ask, him, oh, do you get like, do you have any, um, what's the accommodations? And he told me, he told me, uh, what do you mean? I was like, oh, so do you get extended time? Do you have somebody read things to you or anything of that nature? He said, he said, oh, I do get taken out of class sometimes. And I get, I go one-on-one -on -one with a, with a teacher and I, I read with her and I get extended time. So from there I figured out, okay, yeah, he definitely has some things. Cool. and I think it's become more beneficial for him. 
Well, sounds like a job to me. <laughs> he said he didn't yeah. know if it was a job, but that's great work. Yeah. You're doing. That's cool. So Ella, remember you can scroll across your, um, your face, your ID here and give a thumbs up if you want, or let us know how you're doing or that she, no, she lost her. disappeared altogether. Well, we hope she comes back. Jimmy, I, I want to encourage, and then we'll, when Suella comes back, we'll jump into the sort of presentation that Marina has ready for us. But I want to encourage you to use AI a little more on what you're writing. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to share my screen. And you don't need to read my email, but <laughs> uh, there. And just want to kind of give you an example that I just played with. So I just made a thinking partner called a free writer, free writing, free writing. Don't know what to call it, but it's called free writing. Um, and it's in these logs. Welcome back. I'm just showing an example of using AI. Okay. Um, and so I wrote this, uh, when was it? Yesterday. I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. It looks like okay. So I wrote this and then um, I asked it. I went, I took the whole paragraph and I went to ask AI and I chose the free writing one. I want to encourage you to play with that one, see if it works. We just made it. We'll see. We'll see if that one works or not. Um, there's also a couple of others, the wicked problem one and the um, burning question one. You can use any one you want, but those three we're kind of playing with. That's the one I use. And it came back I, like three different. I, I had it give me three different versions before I settled on this one. But it gave me this paragraph that says, so let's take a look at these themes and consider how we might explore further possibilities for a thinking partner that would help log keepers in their self-discovery process. Now, I really had to read that paragraph like three times, didn't know what it meant, but it was fascinating to me. It made me think, and that's really what we're trying to do here, right? And so I went down here and I replied to just that paragraph, I said, well, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I like the formulation. Um, and so then I kept exploring over here. So that's the idea that we're trying to go with the, why we're calling these dialogue notebooks is that the AI might, might jar your thinking a little bit, right? So play around a little bit um, and with the AI as you're doing this? Does that make sense? Is that? Yeah, so, but do you yeah. want me on something that I had already written? Yeah, you'd have to, you, you, well, it's up to you. There were three different ways to think about this. One is something you've already written and, and you, you can choose like the paragraph or even just a sentence. The other is to write something more and then do the whole document, right? There's the link to the whole document. So that's the other way to go. Okay. Okay. You can really choose which way you want to do it. Um, Suella, you're here. Can you hear us? Um, let's see if. Oh. Well, if you can hear us, um, use the chat to communicate with us. Okay. And um, then we'll figure it out. Let's jump in, though. Um, Marina, we, we'll see how it goes um, <laughs> in giving her feedback on this work and so forth. But why don't you jump in, Marina? Share your screen and start. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, just as a intro, um, 
we're going to, I'm going to share a little bit about a project that I did with my third graders um, during the last half of the year. Um, and it's a problem-based learning unit. Um, and and Google, are you going for math, Jimmy, right? You're going for secondary math? Yeah. Yeah. So that's really exciting because there's a lot of really great ways you could do problem-based learning with a lot of like data literacy and stuff like that. Um, so just keep that in mind as like we're going, we're going through it. Um, but I'm going to, I think the first thing that we'll do is we'll have you go over to. Um, well, she is persistent. That's good. So I was coming back. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, well, 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 before Marina finishes that sentence, I'm almost curious. Do you know who you're going to be student teaching with yet? As of yet, no. Okay. Um, I'm still waiting on an email, on an email back. All right. Because um, I know they, they said that there was a student, the student teaching was a little bit um, for noise students that hadn't opened yet. And I was waiting back to hear. Okay. I just was checking on it. Sorry to interrupt you, Marina. No, that's all right. All right. So, um, Jimmy, on the table, you'll see that there is um, a rectangle that says Journey Down the Hudson River. And um, what I'm going to have you do is click on that. And then after you click on that, you're going to go to where it says Problem-Based Learning. And on this page and now comment, there's a couple of videos. So there's five. Um, the first one is, you don't have to watch all five of them. You're just going to pick one to watch and make comments on while you're while you're watching it. Um, and I think before you do that, Paul will probably give like a little tutorial. Right right. So <laughs> um, the one first one is humane education. So I actually worked with um, this organization up in Maine called the Institute of Humane Education to do this type of work. So they're not going to use the words problem based learning, but it's definitely um, solutionary thinking around problems. Um, this one, I'm just giving you a little heads up. So like you could pick one that you think might be the most relevant to you um, or of interest to you based on, you know, moving towards secondary math. The second one is like a pretty good rundown of the history of problem-based learning um, and then kind of what it's made up of. The third one just kind of shows like a school and how they take problem-based learning and implement it like across the grades. This one, I believe is like secondary um, science, some like robotics in there. And then the last one is math. I, I would tell you that it is younger students. It's like kindergartners, but I've, I, I don't think that matters because you can always learn vertically. Um, what somebody does in early childhood can definitely leave an impression on what you end up doing with, like, let's say you had freshmen, you know? Marina, why don't I just show you how to do it? And then while I'm doing that, sure. the others will see it too. Okay. Just, just want to say in the collection that... Um, that you've gone to, it is the next to the last item on that list. Problem, it's and it's called problem-based learning. All right? Did you find it, Jimmy? I'm on. I followed all the stuff that she's done so far. Okay, so you're on the videos. Yes. And Suella, did you find the videos? Uh, again, if you can, whoop, go ahead. Say again. So on the table, there's a, a rectangle, uh, an image that says Hudson, Hudson. But so well, we can't hear you, but if you can use the chat, we'll be able to see what you're thinking and help you that way. Um, Okay, Marina, why don't you click on click on that first one? And what, we are facing the unprecedented start. global challenges. And then our planet is heating. There is there is a um, it says add comment. 
you don't have to you know, let it play again. Oh, you Here, did right? you do that already? Let it, but let it play. Being up, species are becoming comment. extinct at an alarming rate. And Racism then, and other. Yep. You notice it stops. It gives you a timestamp. In this case, it was 10 seconds in, right? And you can make your yep. comment there and then hit start comment. Okay. Um, can you close that dialogue, that box? And I want to show one more thing. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when you're watching a video, you, you like you want to go back a little bit. So play it again, Marina. Other systemic inequities right. persist. Go to add comment. And there are too few efforts to come together and talk about how time. to actually. So now you can go in and say, you know what? That was about three seconds. So change that 18 to 15, for example. And it goes back a little bit and you can make and then hit submit or continue. And you can make your comment. All right. So this is really the two things you need to do. So we want you to watch a video and comment on the video within the video while you're watching. OK, cool, cool. So well, uh, let us know by chat if you got that or not.
okay in about like two minutes we'll come back and we'll just chat quickly Just to remind Marina, even though um, you have a small audience here, yeah, I was just one, gonna... but we are recording and, you know, maybe the others will be able to pick it up from that as well. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so before I, uh, well, let me just make sure everybody's back. Jimmy, are you back? Yep. <laughs> and Swala, okay. Sorry. Did you, did, were you able to finish the video or? I was close to finishing the video. Okay, cool. Good enough. Yeah. Okay. And Swella, you're here. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. I can, um, I can follow you. I just cannot do anything. Like, cannot write, type, or. Okay. This, okay. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a virus on this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so you can hear us. That's good. Yes, I, I can. I, I'm following you. I'm so sorry. I cannot like use other apps while I'm. Good. I I'll, open this. I'll, okay. I'll keep sending you links and messages in the chat. Okay. Thank you so much. I apologize for this. No, it's all good. Okay. Um. All right, so hopefully you have like scratched the surface a little bit of what problem-based learning is. Um, I'm gonna share, I hope it doesn't get slow like it did the last time. All right, so um, Okay, so we are gonna be going back and forth a bit between now comments and um, the story and my process of, um, and my students process really of doing this work. Um, so just, just so you know, we're going to be taking some pauses in between and kind of interacting with some documents and resources. But basically in September last year, I, um, started working with the Institute for Humane Education in Maine, and they do a lot of their work using a solutionary framework um, where they, they help people to identify problems and they work towards discovering through research and experimentation, like what um, is the solution to the problem that does the least harm and the most good. And there's a lot of evaluative parts of the process. Um, and this is what I ended up picking um, with the Hudson River, which is one of our New York um, local waterways, which has also had quite a bit of um, issues with its health over the past, you know, I don't know, a couple of years. A couple of years is a lot of years, but... Um, so again, that's really one, I already mentioned one of them where it really started, but another element of the story is that the work they were doing with the humane education was also grounded in the idea of, okay, well, how do we embed the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as well? So in the middle of those two images, you'll see there's um, the 17 goals from the Sustainable Development Goals. Sometimes they're called the SDGs just, just to you know, make them a little bit shorter and easier to say. So the goal was to develop a plan and experience for learners um, using the Institute's framework, the SDGs, and then also to think about like 
being local to to even drive home relevance even more. Um, so that's why when it came down to, okay, like, well, what's a problem in the world? It really just comes to shrink it down to like, okay, well, where are we? Um, and what might be a problem that we are experiencing where we are? And if you guys are not as familiar with the Hudson River, we do have um, pollution in the Hudson River. Um, and I was surprised a lot of my students knew that um, initially. So with the problem project-based learning experience, definitely want to ask students what they already know about this problem because your plans may completely change based on what they already know. So you could do a ton of planning for all of this and not that any of it's going to get thrown out of the window, but sometimes your kids come in with like more experience, less experience. And um, you might find yourself saying, okay, well, I can either fast forward or I can actually dig deeper in a different direction. Um, so like I said, you're, when you do this type of work, you're identifying a problem and you want to find out what those students know and also what they wonder about the topic because they're not going to have all the answers. And I've already said probably two of these words already. It's really great when it's local because it drives it closer to home. Um, it's relevant because then it makes sense to them and they, um, and when it's meaningful, they care about it. Um, so one way you could do this, like whether you're teaching math or science or any subject is really just with like some T-charts, like um, kind of like probing and getting them to just make a two column chart where they say like, what are the things that I know already about this topic? So I pretty much gave the kids the Hudson River. And they, I'm, I was surprised a lot of my third graders actually did have some inkling that there was pollution. They didn't really know the, like the nitty gritty of stuff, which I didn't expect, but they did know about the pollution and they had wonderings about, um, you know, not just pollution and what types of pollution it was, but also the ecosystem and the animals that lived in the area and things of that sort. Um, so, was that, that was, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take um, our pause and you're going to go back onto the Hudson um, journey down the Hudson River rectangle. And you're going to click on in the collection. It says, here are some videos that we started with. Um, it's the second thing on the agenda, on, on right. the list. Yep. Because I just think it's so important to see it too. Okay. So, um, by the way, like the kids don't know about the problem yet. It's just starting with what do you know? What do you wonder? And then a lot of the work that you do in the beginning, like what I did was building curiosity and interest to keep them like engaged and wanting to know more. So, uh, when you're designing this type of work, you're going to want to give them resources, visual, multimedia um, opportunities to interact with information that's going to pique their interest. So um, on this page, which is called Here Are Some Videos That We Started With, there's three different videos that I use to pique interest. Um, I would recommend everybody looking at dolphins swimming in the Hudson River mm -hmm. and when you watch that, you can comment on it because it's quick. The other ones are really long and you can always come back to them at another point if you're interested. Um, the dolphin swimming in the Hudson River is a quick clip from like a news, a news report. And you can watch it maybe once, maybe twice. And then think about the, this question, um, which is also right here. Um, what would bring dolphins to the Hudson River? Oh, that's the question I asked. I asked the students, what would bring dolphins to the Hudson River? But the question for both of you to think about is how might the viewing of this video lead students to develop theories and pose questions? Or even just about like, how might this, you know, interest the kids even more to learn about the river? Okay. So that will take about like five minutes for that because the video is short and then you could just jot out some ideas and you could peruse the other ones for a moment or two if you want. And just a re-comment under that, under that one. 
Yeah, you can comment on the dolphin. Sw you should watch the video dolphin swimming in the Hudson River. And then, yeah, you can timestamp it. I, I know that there's some other comments there already. Um, mm -hmm. Try yeah, not to, you know, let those. Yeah, go. don't pay attention to those. Just do your own. Can I do it similar to how I was doing it before with commenting on, commenting, like you said, on the timestamps? Yeah. Fine? Okay. Yep. And it's interesting. Our lifeguard at the Hudson, like, it's a, we call the beach here the Hudson. We have a Hudson Park, and the, there's a beach there as well. Right. And I am, that's where I lifeguard at. It's the Hudson, the Hudson, Hudson Beach, I guess we call it. Where, where is that near? It's in New Rochelle. Um, we have like a pier where the Hudson flows down. And uh -huh. I, I'm pretty sure they imported sand a while ago and a long time ago. And uh -huh. they have sand on, we have it at, in New Rochelle. And that's where I like to go at. And it's interesting because um, when it rains really hard, we actually have to close the beach. For because, sewage, right? Yes. Yeah, because yeah. of the and the and the, all of that, the rainfall brings a lot of bacteria into the water, and and swimming it. Thing where it's it's relevant. Well, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I love how local you made that, Jimmy. That was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we'll let you watch the video for like a moment, and then we'll check in in like three minutes. Like three minutes. Uh, ask that in the chat. Again, I'll, I'll follow. Okay, so just one more minute and then we'll um, we'll come back. All right, so is everybody back? Jimmy, Swella, ready to go? Keep going? Give me one second, I'm finishing this comment. 
Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And so, well, if you want to type anything into the chat about your reactions to the video or how that video might um, intrigue children, learners, you know, feel free to share in the chat if that's the easiest thing to do right now, and we'll read it out loud for you. Okay. So, Jimmy, do you want to share um, any of your thoughts or ideas? I know you, you put a comment. I saw it. <laughs> yeah. My, my first comment was, um, actually, I remember, I, I remember more of my second comment. Let's see what I did. The first one had to do with, oh, yes, social media. So this, for me, I've seen a lot of social media clips where it's like, uh, uh, like for example, like a whale. I saw like a, a like a orca following a boat, and it was it was continually like staying with the boat and like signaling to the boat like like follow me in a sense. And the boat did follow the orca, and it, it saw that like there was another orca that needed it's their help, and they helped them. They they helped the orca, and it, then after that, the orcas went on their way, and they stopped following the boat. So my thing was maybe if a student saw a clip like that similar to that they may see the dolphins following these kayak these people that are kayaking and may think something similar or something different yeah yeah and that's exactly what happened with you know my younger students who are eight and nine years old a lot of them saw, thought things like that they were like well maybe they need help or maybe they where they're coming from is not clean or not safe for them um and then, you know, there's the whole big idea of how the broadcasters react in that video when they're like in the Hudson River, like they're not supposed to be there, but are they supposed to be there? And I haven't been there in a while. So there's a lot of like different types of cyclical conversations that can emerge just from that. It was really exciting. And this is why I said when you're like doing this type of work with learners, like you don't really know where it's going to go because a lot of it comes from them. And after using those first three resources, you know, the one student briefly said, I don't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't look polluted, you know, because frame of reference for pollution was litter and seeing plastic water bottles float in the water or trash and things of that sort. So when that happened, that was when I realized with my co-teacher that I needed to do a lot more work around background building some background information and different types of experiences to help my students actually understand like what the problem might be and you know that came in the form of posters infographics and word walls and i'm just thinking as you're both going into math infographics are wonderful for this type of work especially at like levels like where you guys are going to be teaching because a lot of times there's percentages on infographics and there's um numbers with decimals there's larger numbers that might you know might be a little too you know third graders might not be ready for them but if you were to build something you're going to have a lot of numbers facts available that um your students can grapple with um word walls visual word walls connecting images with the language another really great tool and like as i'm going to just bring this up i don't know if the schools that you have have experience with this, but is Gizmos, they all do online math and science simulations. So we did an online simulation where we learned about the different types of water pollution, bacterial being one of them, nutritional sediment, and the students had were, you know, they had to identify the different types using images and stories. We also did field trips. So getting out, um, getting outside and getting more um, connected with the topic. So we actually went to the science barge in Yonkers, which was really great because we didn't just learn about the Hudson River issues. They also have, not recently, but like 
I guess in the past 10 years, daylighted the Sawmill River, which is a tributary of the Hudson River. And it was covered by concrete because there it, it was completely covered by concrete. But um, again, the same issues with sewage and that directly flows into the Hudson. So the kids are really fascinated. And I say that just because, you know, like it's just to see all these different connections and then also like creating opportunities for students to have virtual visits or in-person visits. We had virtual visits. So um, we met with a scientist, a watershed scientist who out who worked out by the Mississippi River. And it was really great to work with him because he told the kids a lot about sediment pollution, which is not necessarily a big issue over here. It's bigger over there with more farms and construction. But it got the kids thinking. Um, so after we did all this background information, then finally they were able to come up with problems and establish questions. And some of those came from the kids. So here's like what they built up, like uh, what bacteria is in the Hudson River. Here's the sewage. How does sewage affect Oops, the Hudson River? They didn't know that word until we did the background knowledge and like build some learning around and that. A lot of that came from the gizmos, by the way, too. Um, how did the Hudson River get toxins in it? What are sediments in the Hudson River? And then ultimately we were able to develop our own big question that would ground the whole project is how can we reduce and prevent invisible pollutants from entering the Hudson River? Because again, part of this work is it's solutionary in, in mindset of how are we going to um, come up with a solution that does the most good and the least harm? Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to stop again so you can interact with a little bit more. Could I could I ask a question? Yeah. So one one of the things I'm sitting here thinking is that it, it, how wonderful it would have been um, if if there was a school in the Bronx who was doing this at the same time. Right? Yeah. Because the the um, the sewage that happens when there's a downpour of rain in the Bronx is very serious in the Bronx River, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And comes up. So anyway, yeah, to, to be able to kind of localize, but also have a couple of different groups do it at the same time would be interesting. But yeah. then also oh, to realize the Hudson is connected, you know. Find me another Hartford. third grade teacher in a, in a New York City public school, uh, school. that'd be great. I also would love to get a teacher from up north too, knowing that the Hudson River is 315 miles long and all of that. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. And and how the, the further north you go, the worse the pollution is. And that's a, a worth, something worth thinking about, right? Mm -hmm. Because the sediment that came down from the factories and so forth, didn't get washed out by the ocean like it does down where I live. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, lots of things to think about. Yeah. All right. So um Jimmy, did you have anything to add to that? I wanted to give him a chance to yeah. a little bit here. Yeah. So maybe not Obviously, coming up with a solution would definitely be a little bit hard, but or just raise awareness of what's going on, so that mm -hmm. these kids, if you if you have a bunch of kids from the top all the way to the bottom, understanding what's going on, it'll hopefully maybe have a diff have a cause and effect that oh, let's stop doing X or let's stop doing Y so that this doesn't happen or so that we don't affect so that we don't um, pollute the the Hudson River any more than it already is. And Suella is saying, if I could jump in, the, how surprised she was at the dolphins. And she just wrote, we are destroying our planet and we should do something to prevent it, prevent for the worse. Anyway, yeah. She's definitely here with us, engaged. <laughs> so go ahead. Okay. So again, we're going to take a pause. You guys can interact with some stuff. Um, this page in the collection is, it, I titled it watershed information, but it's just, it's not just the watershed. Um, this is a variety of different types of resources that I used with my students to help them build their background knowledge and to get closer to coming to what the problem was. The main thing is like, you know, I mean, it's, it's great when the kids can come up with their problem themselves. So 
this has a bunch of different resources on it, including like, and it, like this one's more of just a visual diagram, it's, but not so much an infographic. This is a, the gizmo, a little description of it. Um, and then there's other um, resources that I use. You see it very visual. What I want to point both of you to, to spend a couple moments with is this video right here called the five Y. So it's in the middle of the page. A lot of video work today. Um, this strategy, the five whys, you might watch it and then say like, oh, what does this have to do with um, Marina's project? But the five why strategy is really one of the best ways to get down to, to get to the question. So I'm not going to even say much more. So you can watch the video and then we could talk about it after. So I think this one's about five minutes long. So we'll take about six minutes then. Okay. And you could just think, let me do this. Did I put a prompt next to that one? Uh, I, how could this strategy be used to support learners to think critically about problems and how could this strategy be used to help build questioning skills? Okay, if you guys can come back, we'll just we'll just chat briefly and then I'll tell you the rest of the story. Okay, so did you guys both get to watch the whole video of the five whys? Well, it's typing. <laughs> no, I didn't finish it yet. Okay, all right. Um, Did you want us to comment on on this one as well, or? Yeah, I mean, we could also just talk a little bit about it too, okay. if that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and Tola, please, if the chat's feeling good for you, please, you know, continue to communicate with us there. Um, but Jimmy, I'll invite you to go first and just share just what are you thinking and about that strategy and how it might get students to think critically. And um, I think it would help students to think critically just because of the fact that not not they might 
is find where a problem is, but finding the problem is is part of the solution in a sense where it's you have to find the problem. Okay, now where does that problem stem from? If that problem stems from another problem, then you have to find now where does that problem stem from? Mm -hmm. So it's a continuation of finding the beginning of it to then solve each other thing individually. And yeah. as far as the like as far as the video goes, it, it did a really good job of explaining that where it was like the, the creator of Toyota was he found this problem, it was a fuse, but then it was actually this that was that was malfunctioning that was causing the fuse to to shorten to out and that caused that was caused by something else. So you find the root of the problem. And it sort of funnels down into where it comes from. So I think that could be a very important strategy or very good strategy for students to implement because it causes them to think further into what they're looking at rather than just trying to solve it immediately based off of the one thing that they see. Yeah. And what that's this strategy is a really big one that's like they, they use at the Institute of uh, Humane Education for the solutionary thinking because um they they want you to go deeper you you need to go deeper below like what what you see on the surface um in order to actually solve a problem and not just um kind of put a band-aid on a problem or um okay so last bit share um okay so after um we determined our question. We did a lot of different um, researching and experimenting on solutions. So um, we read a storybook about green infrastructure. And uh, what was nice about that was because there was no river in that storybook, but because it mentioned green infrastructure and that is a sustainable solution to help prevent flooding. Um, the, the kids were asked really to start synthesizing some of their ideas. We also learned about rain barrels, the importance of clearing out storm drains, um, and bigger connections like decreasing other habits that contribute to climate change. Because after we did the why, 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 and we were kind of talking about sewage and overflows, well, why is there so much more? Um, we kind of went in two different directions. We had two why, why, whys with that too, actually. One was that like our sewer systems are really old and they were designed in a way that doesn't support so much rain. But then when we went um, further deeper, it, you know, was it like, okay, well, are things changing? Perhaps in the past, they didn't have a problem with flooding in this area. I don't know. Maybe the rain wasn't as high. The rain levels weren't as high. Um, Marina, so, yeah. Did, you, did, they, did your students, when you went on trips and had guests and so forth, did your students use the why, why, why with them? Did you find or no? They they we used it as a class. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking. I was just thinking it'd be interesting if they started developing that too. But okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um. So just some other like things that we did. They uh, we used Minecraft um, to redesign sewer systems, like just to kind of because you know again like the quick fix was for some of them was we could we could fix them we could we could put money and get them fixed. And, you know, so it was like, okay, well, I mean, that's good. Cause that makes jobs for people. Like that's, that's when you think about that least good and least harm, you know, it's good. There'll be people will get jobs. People have work. Um, but a har like, it's going to take a long time, you know? Um, and then some in independent prototyping. Um, so as, as I was just saying that, a lot of this work also involves analyzing solutions and what is it, how is this solution going to help the problem? How might it, you know, not help the problem? Will it cause additional harm? Um, so again, like teach, I love teach arts for so many different reasons, but um, this was just one where we looked at the rain gardens and how would they help with this particular problem of sewage in the Hudson river? Um, and how might they still harm it? And really, like, it, and you have to, like, really think about stuff like this, too. So they came, the kids came up with with this stuff. Like, is it against the law to build one, right? So there's that whole, like, legal piece. Like, can you just build something anywhere you want? Or um, one student said people who sell plants, like, that would harm if there was a garden. Um, 
they said that this it's it could be further changing a, a habitat to do that uh when you're building the garden it's loosening dirt then that would be sediment so i thought those were really great thoughts the kids were coming up with um for that so Suella just to say is saying that she loves the way you're getting the kids to ask questions hmm. i'm summarizing what she wrote but no and this is great like i i'm like really excited to share this type of stuff with you guys it's going into math because i just i teach math too you know at a third grade level but um and and actually my co-teacher and i we we collab we we connected with the carry institute um they're further up the line and they had some data sets of uh some issues in the Hudson River, like with zebra mussels and salinity. And we just felt like it was a little, it was a little too much for where our students were. And if I had been working with like students, maybe around like sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, they would have been like the ideal um, next step to add in for some like uh, data literacy work as well as like to think about like, well, you know, to have some conversations about like, what is this data suggesting? Why is it presented this way? Can you use this information to um, argue for a point to uh, to somebody of why there needs to be changes? Um, so there's really great, there's so many great math connections with this work too. Um, and then the most important thing too, is that you get the information out there and you share it. Um, so what we did, and we did a, so many different things, but one thing we did is we, we made um, a little website. So it was collaborative and um, it was just titled like, how can we help the Hudson River? And it started with just the story of what we did. I'll share with you here where we wrote, this website shares parts of our learning journey. It is also a call to action. This is more than just litter. So that's addressing that one student that brought up that idea. Like, it doesn't look polluted. Um, it is about changing the way we do things all over New York State to prevent invisible pollutants from entering the Hudson River. This website invites you to consider how you can be a solutionary for the Hudson River. Um, so, you know, just some little tidbit stuff, the picture of the school, a map to show how long it is, a book that we read, how we're part of the Hudson River watershed. Um, this is like a direct, this is from the gizmos that we use. So just those different types of pollutants. And then, um, so sharing directly with who's ever interacting with our website and what we learned, the exact PowerPoints and visuals, um, put in here some of the questions that you saw them in the PowerPoint that the kids asked. Now, one other thing that the students did that was really engaging was that they did some perspective and point of view writing, and they put themselves in the in the persona, well, in the persona, they pretended to be the river. So if the river could talk, what would it say? Um, to answer this question, we thought about more questions. So um, these are some of the students writing. So what makes the river happy? Um, I am ecstatic when I see people swimming in the morning. I see dawn when otters cuddle. They are so cute. When they do that, they massage me. I dream that otters giggle, that the Atlantic sees silver sides. Glowing stars are fun to see that midnight. Um, so there's just all these like little clips that show evidence of their learning of the ecosystem, um, the wildlife and stuff like that. Um, and then we also have like some of the, you know, not so pleasant parts, uh, what makes the river sad. People don't care about me. Construction workers and farmers push soil in me. A plastic bottle flows through me. Ow. I feel bad for my fish friends. Their gills get clogged because of too much sediment. Um, so these are just like different clips that the kids, they wrote whole poems, but I, I just put different clips on there for the kids. Um, so that everybody, you know, was able to contribute something. Um, and what, I had one student do an audio reading. Um, another thing that we did to further personal, personalize it is um, all the students kind of like adopted or took on their own river that was important to them. Like it's from a place that meant a lot to them. So we had kids... Um, do some research on other places. Like, this kid did the Shimanto River in Japan. 
River Shannon in, uh, in Ireland. They've included some of the wildlife. Um, here's the Colorado River. And the student added, my grandma lives near the Colorado. So again, further personalizing the project to, you know, show that this isn't just, you know, bringing it local to more global too, um, so that um, they can see, yes, this is a local issue, but are there other places that are dealing with similar problems? And perhaps maybe we could look at what they're doing, um, things like that too. And ultimately, we created we they created public service announcements um, with video. So I, I'll play one because I know we're getting close to time. So let me just play one. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, eight seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Looking curious. For both children today, we have a story about the Hudson River and two special guests, two special friends who want to make a difference. Let's meet Bear Cub and Otter. Hi everyone, my name is Barry and this is my friend Otter. Hello everyone, we love living here by the Hudson River, but lately we've noticed something horrible happening near our home and we can't help sewage slow down. <laughs> yes, Hudson River has a problem with sewage. Do you know what that means? Sewage is human waste and stuff that goes down the drain when you are washing your hands. Well, I, I didn't know that sewage was pretty bad. Unfortunately, the sewage goes down pipes into the Hudson River and affects our community. That's right, Otter. It's a big problem, but luckily there's a solution called new pipes. That means people can put in new pipes. That way, less sewage will get in, in the Hudson River. For example, Barry, people can go into the pipes and fix the pipes so they only go down one pipe. Whoa, isn't that fantastic? That helps protect the river because then less sewage gets into the Hudson River. And remember, children, always believe in yourself. You can always do it. Together we can make a big difference. Absolutely, Otter. Let's fix and, and make a big change. Children, let's join Otter and Barry in their in their mission in their mission to protect the Hudson River. Remember to look out for the Hudson River and other rivers in other places. Thank you. Okay, so they actually did that themselves. They we use we video and um, they we uh, they just. um they in their groups they they had to pick a, a solution that they felt was the best so they they went with the the pipes um but yeah there's so there's a bunch of them and then um here's again that reference back to the sdgs so like you know um aligning it with goal number six clean water and sanitation and then 14 life below water um and that was a little website that we made to show our learning journey and share with um, our, our community at my school. Oh, if, if you uh, scroll across your face, you can hit the confetti. Oh. <laughs> hmm. And know. you can also, not the, I wanted to clap here. Here a second. <laughs> Thank you, Marina. Seriously, um, any any sort of final thoughts or questions for Marina? I'm watching the chat to 
I think it's it's very interesting that they went with the with the just the one pipe to carry everything. Mm. Um, that's sort of like a like a it's like when you know how when it was like yellow outside because of all the the air pollution that was coming from Canada. Mm -hmm. There was a meme going around. You know the air purifiers that you have in your house. They <laughs> said to build one big air purifier and put it in the middle of Manhattan, and then that would clear up the whole entire thing. And it's sort of, so yeah. I, find, I just find it funny. Yeah, no, and you know, and one thing that they learned about was like the combined sewer sewer system. How like the pipes are, they're connected. So like, which you know, when you look at them, you're like, it it would make sense why bacteria and stuff that doesn't belong in the river would go into the river if there's so much rain. Yeah. Um, but you know, and and the systems are are very old, like. The, around the whole country, we learned that like there's some that are from like Civil War time. Oh, thank you, Swell. They really loved that. That actually was like a side writing prompt. Um, so they like like I said, they wrote longer poems, um, and I, I thought we thought that was really important to help build like empathy and. Um, that that piece of like really caring about something. Um. So some reflection in the habits of mind, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, and I realized I didn't put the habits of mind here on the table, but I will do that. But if, but you can find it in the in the now comment group. It's also just nowcomment.com slash habits um which so i'll put it here on the table now but if you get there before i do that go ahead go ahead Mar marina yeah so i was just gonna say that um we i we spent some time i mean we've looked at the document before um i picked four habits that maybe we could think about with this particular project with my learners your future learners or even yourself as a learner right now um what habits uh, what's being practiced in this type of work so i picked um gathering data through all of the senses thinking flexibly responding with wonderment and awe and then taking responsible risks so um i'll I'll read them again um, in a second, but it looks like Paul put the link to the habits of mind on the table, um, the orange square with the light bulb that has a brain inside of it. If you want to click on that, and then, and then when I click on that, it doesn't. Um, it didn't go there. Hold on, the I'm working on it. Well, in the oh, meantime, I'll oh, say I those. Miss, hold on. Habits again. So should gathering, work, should work now. Yep. So yes. gathering data through all senses, thinking flexibly, responding with wonderment and awe, and taking responsible risks. Um, so just like a like you can pick one of those quickly, read it and reflect on you know which of those habits or really any habit if you want to pick. Do you see reflected in this type of work?
And then when you guys are finished, we'll just, because we know it's 630, um, just if you want to just check back in with us and share a little bit about what you said, and then we'll go over what next week might look like. Or you can always go back to it too um, during the week. The um, collection that Marina put together is in the, the uh, collections on the group, the uh, noise group. So you can always find it there. And you want to continue, 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 continue logging each day if you can. Use AI, use a comment on each other's stuff. Just kind of keep going. And then next week, what we're going to do is, is you won't be able to do like a whole project or anything, but we are going to ask you to think about what kind of problem-based project you might want to set up for your students once you have them. All right. So that's, and, and it'll all go into your notebook, right? So you can have it for the future. So that's where we're going. Jimmy, what's up? Excuse me? Oh, you, you unmuted, so I thought you might just say something. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. So any final thoughts? Um, I, did com I did comment on my um, oh, habits of mind. I, I chose question questioning and posing problems. Um, yeah, I, mine was filling in when, when you ask questions, you're filling in the gaps between what you know and what you don't know. And I said, Albert Einstein said to question everything. And by doing so, I believe it would benefit the student or the person um, to fully understand what is going on. And it helps them conceptualize the ideas in a, in a deeper way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Sorella was having trouble with the chat too. So <laughs> anyway, she's doing the best she could here. Oh, it looks like she's typing, but it never comes through. All right. We'll have to, Svella, maybe consider getting to a different place or computer next week, or I don't know if you can do that, but we, we can think about that with you. Thank you. Um, we, you know where we are if you need us. We, you know we'll be checking your logs and giving you feedback and thoughts as you go. Good to see you. Good to see you guys as well. See you next okay. week. You soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.